So uh, today we wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about fences. We've um, we put a video out on board fencing. And building a fence can be a fun project. And how to repair some barbed wire fencing. Okay, so we're out here in our field and um, we have some barbed wire and then you're having to slide it down. Oops, hit my wire. When you live on a farm or a ranch, fences are kind of your best friend and you really get to know the different types of fences and, and when to use them. Mm -hmm. So we have on our farm the, the typical board fence. Um, we have barbed wire fencing. Barbed wire fencing is not great when you have horses, but... Um, no, it's one of the worst kinds to have. This is not good because this can get stuck on one of our horses. It looks like somebody came in here at, at tell. Uh -uh. Looks like somebody came in here and repaired the fence. So I'm just going to wrap this up. Hey. Yeah, no. Daddy? Come back and cut that. Ben, you don't have to be afraid of the horses. They're not gonna hurt you. But what if they come and sniff on me? No, they sniff on you. The purpose of this land prior to us was for haying and prior to that cattle. See three different eras of fence. There's like a post, an old wooden post, and then like a more recent, within the past, I don't know, what, 10 years post? So you can just see the generations of fence building that are just kind of built into the topography. What they did here was they came in and they put up a newer fence right in here. One of their cows got into ours. So it's not something that we put in initially, and because of the size of pasture we have, it's also not something that was feasible for us to replace immediately. And also, a tree fell on uh, the fence line, and somehow there's a fence, like there's a line over it because I think somebody fixed it. Now because we have a good chunk of land and grazing space and clean water. It's not an area that we've been really concerned about because the horses don't challenge any of our fence lines. The only area that they challenge is up at the paddock area and we've um, replaced all but one section of the fencing there so that they are safer. Now because the paddocks we have are at the front of the property, we needed to have a dual purpose fence, one that would keep trash and critters out of our property, as well as keeping our own critters in our property. Which uh, brought us to kind of researching several different kinds of fence. We could, we wanted to have a board fence across the front of our property because we liked the look of the board fence, but we also wanted to make sure that these holes weren't here going all the way down the fence so that the dogs couldn't slip in. We needed uh, critter protection and trash protection. We, we looked into several different things. You could get a woven fence. They also had something called a knotted fence, which those are, knotted fences are good for uh, cow and uh, they're actually used for bison. Uh, same with woven fences, but because of the, the way that they're knotted and woven, they stick out a little more and we wanted to be able to put boards on over the the actual fencing material. And let it lay flush. Like we didn't want anything to be protruding and there to be a major gapping situation. So across the front of our property we have welded wire which is really what we wanted to talk about in this video. Um, welded wire has some benefits and the benefit of it being flatter. There's not as many divots, it holds up a little bit longer and it looks more uniform and pretty. It's definitely less expensive, although I would argue that with welded wire over like a woven wire, you're going to have a little more excess waste. And Why is that? Because the, the woven wire can stretch more, whereas, because it, it's it's linked, whereas the, the welded wire is kind of stuck. Because so it's welded. It's welded, yeah. And that also poses a problem when you're going up and down hills. We're on very hilly property. And when you go up and down hills, that welded wire is going to um, either ripple. bow at the top or the bottom. It's going to ripple. There's nothing you can do about it. But we did figure out ways to install the welded wire so that there is minimal rippling. Yes, minimal rippling. Uh, 
basically to put in a welded wire fence, we're putting in the same posts that you see here on our... Should I do the instruction part on my own? Yeah, maybe. You do realize we can't have a conversation in the house for more than like two minutes without him going, ah! Yeah. Because he wants to be a part of the conversation. So while installing this fence, um, we put in our posts. We, we drilled these the same as we would on our uh, board fence, and we spaced them about six feet apart. This is a five foot woven wire fence. The reason why we put five foot in here isn't because we're worried about the dogs going through it five feet up in the air, but we wanted to make it uniform with our board fence, which is um, at five feet based on the withers of the horses so that they're not tempted to jump it. Because this fence is going across the front of our property, all of these posts are concreted into the ground because we're not going to move this fence. We have no, no desire to take this fence down once it's up. We've actually had a car back into one of these posts and somehow the post remained uh, upright. So the concreting has definitely worked for us. You can't approach your welded wire fence project with perfection. It'll never happen if you have hills. Whenever it goes down, your, um, it, either the top or the bottom is, is going to be pulling or pushing and, th and therefore you're gonna have either tightness at the top or a little bit of looseness down at the bottom. This is a good example of where you can see where we're kind of going down a hill here. Um, we have a little extra down at the bottom. It's very hard to pull that out. I've uh, tried it down here in the corner where you can see kind of stretched out down in the corner there. But ultimately, once the boards are up here, you're really not gonna notice too much of that. For the most part, looking at the fence, it looks uh, pretty straight. A lot of times, I, you put these type of critter fences up on, on smaller areas, and this would normally be a woven fence uh, scenario if we weren't putting the boards up. The capabilities of putting in this fence completely straight for this use aren't that practical. What we try and do is stretch it tight enough to remove as much of the slack as possible. They actually sell a tool that you can use for stretching woven wire, welded wire fencing. At Tractor Supply it has multiple hooks um, or your farm supply store and it will help pull the fence down. We didn't have that. We're not about to go waste money on another tool for uh, just the fencing project across the front of our house. Once we're done with this 1500 feet, we're not going to be using the welded wire anymore. So uh, what I used was a barbed wire fence stretcher that we, we have because we've had to do repairs to our barbed wire fences. I set it on here and pulled the fence down the line and tightened it uh, every so often. The issue I ran into with using the barbed wire fence stretcher is that it will actually pull these and bend them uh, in most cases, if you if you don't pull too much and to the point where you actually rip the welding, you can bend it back with your fingers and straighten it back out. But that is going to be an issue when you stretch it. I like to stretch it across the top or across the bottom first and then work my way up and then staple it. For staples, we're using just a 10 millimeter, uh, three quarter inch staple. You can use uh, several different types of staplers for that. You can use the hand uh, held stapler or you could use an air compressor stapler. We, when we, before we started stretching this wire with um, the barbed wire stretcher, we would try and do it by hand, which really hurts. And so one person would be stretching it and the other person would be stapling it. The hand staplers are <clears throat> pretty hard on your hands over a long period of time if you don't have a real strong grip. So when we were doing that and Shauna was stapling, that's when we used the air compressor stapler because it's it really just kind of a point and shoot thing. I actually prefer using the handheld uh, over the air compressor stapler for a job like this because I feel like I have a little more control plus I don't have to worry about moving the air compressor down the fence line and getting electrical to it as I go. I really like to put in a lot of staples when I do this um, because I want this to be as secure on these posts as possible. It also helps when you're when you're stretching it along to have multiple points of contact along the, on, along the posts, going from post to post, 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 post. Now when we're ready to put the fence up, what we normally will do, will do is we'll set the roll down and roll it down a ways, uh, probably at least uh, eight to 10 posts. 
and then we'll stand the roll up against the posts. We'll start at one end and staple an end post, and then we'll start stretching it from that point until we get it down to the point where the roll is, and then we'll roll out some more and do it again. If you try and roll out too much, uh, you're gonna end up with a wobbly mess on your hands. When you're putting the wire up, it helps to have a string to tie it on a couple posts to help hold the wire to the post while you're working your way down. So on a fence like this where we have uh, posts set at six feet apart, I would recommend maybe rolling out eight posts and then coming back in and stretching every two to three posts until you've got it uh, as tight as you can get it. The, uh, the welded wire definitely uh, serves a purpose for us. It's pretty flat. Um, on the fence section that has been done, uh, now that section we did when we first bought the property, so we used what we call around here dollar boards. They're miscut boards. Uh, they're not as pretty as some of the boards that we are using now, but um, those boards will easily go over the welded wire and uh, secure very tightly to the post versus a woven wire where uh, there would be a little bit of gapping between the post and the and the board, which allows more opportunities for, for rain rot and other things. Another important tool that you're gonna need for this project are a good uh, set of wire snips because uh, every so often it helps if you snip the wire, especially uh, when you know you're getting into a curvy section the more cuts you have in the wire, the easier it is to maneuver the fence without getting too many uh, loose spots at the top or the bottom. So here's a spot where we ended uh, one run to try and keep it as tight as possible for the first four posts. And then we, we started a new run. This is because there's a hill right here and we wanted to make sure that we were um, kind of staying with the land and cutting and then starting a new spot where the, the land changed in direction. So there's a lot of different types of fencing that we could have used for the ranch thus far. We've picked each one individually because of their um, strengths and the regions that we were having to place them. We have a lot more fencing to put up and uh, different purposes for each. So we will further explore all of those ways at a later time and we'll probably get into all sorts of different stuff, high tensile wire, uh, special knotted wire. For now, um, for across the front of the house, this is what we've done and it, it seems to work really well and it's fairly inexpensive.